Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the country's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And we've got one for you today. I can't believe we've never spoken before, but Ashley and Sully are the big stars of this new show coming to Liverpool Empire Theatre for two shows only in aid of the Old Hay Hospital on the 11th of February. And I'm delighted to say that Ashley joins us now. How are you? Hello, I'm good, thank you. <laughs> it's really lovely to talk to you. This big celebration has got the big stars of Britain's Got Talent, and you're certainly one of them. I don't know why we've never spoken before, but I just love what you do. You bring such joy to people. You know that, don't you? Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. Um, I mean, I'm very lucky that what I do is uh, something that I love, and people love it as well, so I'm incredibly lucky. <laughs> do you think being beautiful helps, or it's the dog's cuteness that helps? I've always wondered. Um, I think mainly it's the dog, though. I mean, most people, when they meet us, they go straight in for the dog. I'm I'm pretty used to it now. (laughs) Mm. It's interesting. I mean, you and Podsy shot to fame on that show, and immediately we connected. I think we still can't believe that dogs love you enough to do the things you want to do. And there's sort of a joy about it, isn't there, that they're so excited to impress you. That never gets old. Yeah, I think what it is, the dogs just love performing. Um, and, you know, both Pudley and Sully have the ability to capture people's hearts. And, um, I mean, they're, they're two completely different dogs in, in every single way. Um, Pudley was a true professional. Um, he loved showing off. Um, whereas Sully, just, he loves to work. Um, and he's very hyperactive. And I, I was just in the middle of training him, actually. And um, the thing with him is, is I have to wear him out before I train him. Otherwise, wow. he's just so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us the story. How old is Sully now? Um, he, when we perform, he will be five. So he turns five on the 10th of February. Wow. Um, so just before we perform, actually, yeah. But he's, he's, he acts more like five months old. <laughs> and that's what's interesting, because Pudsey did as well, of course. I mean, they've just got such energy. Tell us about the breed. Are they particularly good at taking direction, or is it just you and, and training and discipline? I think it's a bit of both. They both have Border Collie in them, which obviously are very clever dogs. The funny thing is, the reason why why Pudsey and Sully are so different when it comes to performing is the technique that I use. So with Pudsey, when I I trained him, um, obviously he was very clever, um, but I showed him what to do all the time. So I'd I'd lure him in a way with a tree. Whereas Mm. Sully, um, I trained him called uh, a way that's called shaping, and it makes him think for himself. So... If I stand in front of him with a treat or a toy, he will think he will think for himself a bit more and, and go through every trick before he gets that treat. But um, like I said, he, he's very hyperactive, so sometimes I have to try and calm him down a bit. But. <laughs> That's amazing. And I wonder about the pressure of when you do a show like Britain's Got Talent, because, of course, we've seen these disasters, haven't we, where you can have the best animal in the world, and if they don't want to perform, they won't. Have you ever had that, or are dogs different? With dogs, you never know what's going to happen. Even with Pudsey, you know, I was just very lucky that he loved doing what he did, but he could easily have quite, you know, walked off the stage at any point if he didn't enjoy it. Dogs are dogs at the end of the day. And um, even with Sully, he can he can run off, and I had to work a lot with his confidence um, at the beginning. And now he just loves what he's doing so much that, you know, he, he doesn't take any notice of the audience or anything like that, touch wood. Um, but uh, it's just that they both loved what they were doing. Mm. And, of course, they got food at the end of it. If I was bribed with food, I think I'd do pretty much anything as well. <laughs> oh, me too, love. That's why I'm 23 stone. <laughs> you got to do it. I'm a doggy person. Do it for the food. Yeah, exactly. I'll do anything for food. I, I'm a doggy person. I love them so much. And I felt for you so much last year when you made that big announcement. And I remember watching the This Morning piece. How are you doing now? I mean, you can mock and you can scorn. And you say, oh, a dog's a dog, a cat's a cat. But these are family, aren't they? It can't have been an easy year last year. No, I mean, it's, it's not even easy now. Um, like, it was his birthday um, at, at Christmas. So that was a tough day and um, I had to perform I was doing panto that day as well so it was um, it was very strange to be in that position and not have Pudsey with us and um, every day I think of him like when I'm training or, or just little little things remind me of him as well and like you said they're not just dogs they are your family as well mm. um, so it, it was something it was it was the hardest thing I've ever ever had to go through or and um, and still going through now but I've had so much support so so many messages and, and people getting in contact with such lovely words and 
it really does mean a lot and obviously sometimes I can't reply to everyone even though I wish I could but um yeah everyone is definitely in my thoughts and I, is much much appreciated mm. and and again anybody who's had a dog will know the power that they have on your life and you did appear best friends I mean there's nothing like that welcome when you open the door is there exactly um I me and Puppy had a bond that I'll probably never have again with anybody or any other dog. And obviously I've got a very special relationship with Sully. Um, I'm not taking that away at all, but it's it's different. And um, Pudsey was a one person dog. He, he didn't take any notice of anyone else. Um, you know, as long as he was with me, he was confident and he loved what he was doing. And it was definitely a special relationship that um, I'll probably never, never get again or never feel again. Yeah, but what a thrill to have had it. Just beautiful. Exactly, exactly. That's kind of, I've got to just um, remember the happy moments mm. now. <laughs> and the joy again that you've brought to people and audiences around the world. I wonder when we look at pantomime, I mean, for human beings to do it twice a day for weeks on end is a chore. What's it like for the dog? Yeah, I'm, I'm very aware that, you know, panto is hard work. So um, I actually performed with two dogs um, at Christmas uh, just to try and take the weight off of both of them. And and um and balance out how much one dog did and so sully sully was kind of my main dog that i performed with and then i had another dog called eliza and she did a little bit as well um and it just helps them they kind of feed off of each other and um i'm i'm very aware again how much they do during the show so i limit that as well but um they love it like i I keep saying they love it and they really do and i hope that really comes across in their performances the only thing i can think about a dog having had them for years is they don't do what they don't want to do as you say they just walk off wouldn't they or sit down (laughs) they're dogs exactly if a dog doesn't want to do something they won't do it so um, there's no stopping them and what's your life like is there room for anything else in your life i mean what with training and the dogs and then touring and panto you never stop and you don't seem to have stopped since the show itself i mean have you time for anything else in your life i mean it seems like it's all consuming not really i mean i'm incredibly lucky that for five six years well going on six years now i've worked pretty solidly and um you know i love that i love being busy and this year is is looking busier than ever which i absolutely love but it's also a little bit scary as well um but i love it and uh, like i said i'm incredibly lucky and if it wasn't for everyone that supported us and was there for us we wouldn't be here now so um Thank you, everyone. (laughs) Let's talk about this show on February the 11th. I know people are going to look forward to seeing you, but what a bill. Susan Boyle and Calabro and Lucy Kay. Uh, You've got the boys Richard and Adam. Everybody's going to be there, including yourself. It must be thrilling to know that you're the guys that have survived and made it. That's really what the big celebration is, a a survival of the fittest, really, and the best of the best. Yeah, I'm, I'm so excited to be sharing a stage with such incredible people. And I love um, the variety as well. We've got a bit of everything, like literally everything, which I think uh, is incredible. And for an audience to be watching that as well, you know, um, with singers, there's something for everyone. There's dancing dogs, there's pianists, like there's, there's everything. And I think that's incredible. And it's such... And it's for such a good cause as well. So um, I'm extremely excited to be standing like backstage and watching Susan and everyone else. So it's going to be so much fun. And of course, those dogs are going to be petted, I'm sure, continually because people can't wait to see them and you. Um, I guess in one way, you've got to protect yourself when you leave stage door. I guess that everybody just wants to stroke the dog and be with the dog and pictures and all that. Do you have to get out quickly? Yeah, my whole uh, career is always making sure that my dogs are happy. That mm. is number one for me. And it is really tough when it comes to, to people and and I have to sometimes limit, you know, the amount of people or if I let one person stroke my dogs, then I have to let everyone. And I, I have to think about my dogs and they've worked extremely hard that whole day and um, it, it's tough for people. I've, I've been in situations where there have been hundreds of people gathered around me trying to, to stroke Pudsey or, or mm. Sully and it's, it's not fair on them. Like if you put yourself in their shoes how would you feel if a hundred strangers was around you trying to stroke you and and everything so a lot of the time when I say no to to stroking my dogs it's for them and I'm not just being really mean (laughs) well and of course it's like a megastar isn't it you know of course we know who they are but they don't necessarily know who you are and it's a big difference (laughs) exactly and they're dogs as well like I can't say to them this is a situation that's really safe it's okay you're not going to get kidnapped or dog nats or whatever Um, so uh, it, it's tough saying no to people, but it, it's for 
from my dogs. <laughs> and I said to you at the beginning, you are delicious, you know this, you're one of uh, the most beautiful people in show business. Where do we apply to become Mr. Ashley? Because, I mean, there must be a long line of people. Do you even have time for a young man? Is there any possibility that you consider marrying me? I love dogs. I love dogs. <laughs> Your CV is brilliant. Um, at the moment, <laughs> no, I'm focusing... <laughs> I'm focusing on my career and my dogs, and I'm not sure my dogs would allow uh, another person to come into my life at the moment. So, for the time being, it's going to have to be a no, I'm afraid. Calabro, Susan Boyle, Ashley and Sully, magician Lance Corporal Richard Jones will be there. February the 11th, it's happening at the Liverpool Empire Theatre. It's called The Big Celebration, Britain's Got Talent. I love the fact that you are so disciplined and talented. The more talented you are, I think, the more disciplined you have to be. And when working with animals, I've been to Vegas and spoke to these guys the discipline you've got is quite remarkable and it is a 24-7 job and to make it fun and exciting for both you and them is, is a great skill and uh, I thank you for your time Ashley, thank you so much for talking to me 